Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill Friday the 24th of March 2023. In today's Mill News, we've got we're gonna start off with a couple of decent stories from the paper boys. They've really had to dig deep and uh come up with something to publish today, and here we go. We're gonna start off with southernnews.co.uk. Um they didn't so we've got two opinion pieces, one from the Southern News, one from the South London Press. We're gonna start off with this one. It's talking about the uh, running, uh, the games left, and uh, having a look at it. So the Lions are being chased in the battle for the top six rather than trying to catch them above them in the table. Millwall are in the do or die part of their season, where any slip up will be fatal in their bid to secure a top six finish. Asked by News of Journey earlier this month, manager Gary Rowe revealed that he considers the running to start in the final 10 games of the season, but that the Lions clash with West Brom will really mark the beginning. Of the deciding period of their campaign. It is undoubtedly an intimidating prospect following their 1 0 defeat at home to Huddersfield Town. The advantage on Norwich City in 7th place stands at just 3 points, but the positive is that their last 8 games are much easier than their promotion rivals. Granted, the start is tough, a trip to the Orphans is always testing, especially since the baggy sack Steve Bruce and brought in a much more capable manager in Carlos Corberan. Former Mill talisman Jed Wallace will also be out to haunt his former team, knowing that their playoff fate is in their own hands, given the fact that they have a game in hand. A home tie clash with Luton Town is much harder. The Hatters were unlucky to drop points in a reverse fixture at Kenilworth Road, despite equalising late on through Luke Berry's long range strike, but they boast the second best away record in the division and will be confident in extending the line's disappointing run at the dead, just seeing them win just two home games since January 1st. Uh, their five matches after that are comparatively easy though. Old City, Preston North End and Birmingham City have little to nothing to play for, meaning that they will likely take a more attack-minded approach that will suit Millwall. The struggle comes when they play against teams that soak up position and sit deep, much like Huddersfield did last weekend. As a result, trips to Wigan and Fleck and Blackpool will probably be much harder as both sides are still fighting for their lives. Aha, well more on that, more on that. Uh, Wigan, the players are refusing to train, uh, apparently, according to Stephen Corker, um, a story I read today, obviously, they still haven't been paid um, their wages from last month, they've been waiting two weeks for that, um, yeah, and the, uh, the players have agreed not to turn, not to, to go to the training round. So I assume they're all training at home or they're going somewhere else. Training individually or training a team, I don't know. But all we know, I've read the line that they're not going to the training round. So completely chaotic down at Wigan. Uh, Birmingham as well. Uh, problems there. They might be deducted points as well. Um, some funny business going on there. Um, so interesting stuff ahead. Uh, Manager Gary Rowe may be hoping that the Latex relegation has been uh, confirmed by the time they travel to the DW Stadium, which is a definite possibility given their three point deduction for failing to pay their players. However, Blackpool will certainly hope to take their fight for survival to the final day and may feel confident of bringing out a result on home soil. So, Blackpool is our second uh, a penultimate game, a second to the, uh, a game before the last game of the season. So it could be the possibility that Blackpool might be relegated uh, by the time we come to play them as well. Uh, Blackburn at home on the final day has the potential to be the biggest game of the season, depending on where the two sides are at that point. If there is something on the line for one or both of the teams, it could feel as big as a playoff final. Overall, there are huge positives to take despite dropping points at home to Mill Warner's men. The advantage heading into the final six games means that Mill have the fate in our own hands. When their favourable running makes uh, one of the makes them one of the favourites to secure a playoff place. However, this will be a significant test of the Lions' mental strength. The first time Millwall are the ones being chased, rather than chasing the teams above them, that dynamic could end up being a struggle for them. As Robert said, the expectation is now on them. They are no longer underdogs to achieve their goal, and will be tipped to contest the playoffs in May. Anything short of that will likely to be considered a failure. Indeed, I mean, we've been there or thereabouts, and it does feel that this season is 
we've gone a step above, above and beyond. And if we do end up missing out on the playoffs, it's going to be it's going to be a shocker, isn't it? Um, not that we feel entitled to it, but you you think where we were and what where we got up to that we should be we should be in it really. Um, but there you go. So that that's from Southern News today. Obviously, trying to come up with a story when there's not really much Millwall stuff going on. Uh, and here we go. This is the effort from the South London Press and London News Online. Got code UK. Millwall old boy Jed Wallace, a strong player, the player of the year, and tender for West Brom as wingers performance move assessed. So obviously doing a, a Jed Wallace preview piece a week early ahead of the game on Saturday the 1st of April. Um, <clears throat> Jed Wallace has plenty of motivation to deliver at the Orphans next weekend with the West Brom's young Albion attacker, knowing that a win over his former club will spark another twist in the championship playoff chase. Uh, the 28-year-old winger has started all 37 of the Baggies League matches this season, scoring five goals and collecting eight assists. Wallace rejected a new deal with Mill in the summer to quit on a transfer. He queued up John Swift to score at the Den in October and his decision to gleefully celebrate in front of the Coldplay lane in sparked fury from the home support. Mill will hit back to equalise through Callum Styles with a Tyler Burry's 90th minute winner not long after Albion's centre-back Kyle Barley saw red. Uh, West Brom are five points behind the South London club but have a match in hand. Wallace is set to be pivotal to their prospects of extending their campaign beyond 46 matches and keeping alive a Premier League return. Lewis Cox, who covers uh, the Baggies for Express and Star, told the South London Press, Jed is a very strong contender for their player of the season. Uh, Mill fans will know about the consistency he has to his performances and his energy levels. Uh, they made him a huge hit in what has been an up-and-down season for the club. Uh, when Albion played at Mill Wall, they were without a manager in the relegation zone. Carlos Corberain came in and the team did slip to the very bottom of the pile, but, but since been on an incredible run, uh, which takes us to where we are now. Uh, the next game becomes a bit of a playoff shoot, eight, eight against six. Uh, Jed's goal involvement numbers have been excellent. Uh, what he brings to every game in terms of workload, energy and commitment to the cause is very infectious. Uh, fans started loving it very, very quickly. Uh, despite how tired he might be, uh, how many games he's played in this busy period, he never stops running and chasing lost causes. Wallace has netted once since mid-December in a 3-2 defeat of Watford on February the 20th. I wouldn't want to speak for him, but maybe he'd have liked to score two or three more, said Cox. He was on free by mid-September. It's perhaps something to work on, but Albion are not big scorers. Uh, they've won a lot of games by a narrow scoreline and haven't got uh, someone on 20 goals. Uh, topping the charts. Uh, Jed is joint second for assists in the championship. Uh, Burroughs roaring goals is, is top with 11. He's uh, relentless in his crossing. He's so involved and influential. Uh, his figures are good. 13 goal involvements. There are no one games left to improve on that as well. And they want to get uh, that assist tally well beyond 10. I'm confident he'll do that. He'll be looking forward to the April the 1st, no doubt. Wallace's role has slightly changed since Matt Phillips was ruled out in January after undergoing quad surgery. It sort of prompted a bit of tinkering, said Cox. It's not to say we haven't seen him on the right, but he's also been used on the left and sparing there as a 10. He's almost been one of the two up front, but, but been deeper, whether that is with Daryl Dyke or Brandon Thomas Asante. Uh, being diplomatic, that has been semi-successful. Uh, I don't have too much of a problem with it. He has the attribute to play there. Uh, you want to see him out on the right because of his crossing. But from that free roll, his energy and speed of movement means that he can run off the last man and get in. Uh, whether he's out wide or central, he can still cause damage. He's still popped up with assists in that central role. Uh, but he's been a topic of debate and contention over the last couple of months. When the winds haven't been as regular, certainly away. Uh, Halbion have got John Swift, who is about a nat as natural a number 10 as you can get. There have been times when Wallace has been central and Swift has been on the left. And fans have thought, well, that's a bit odd. Uh, many of them just want to see Wallace out on the right. Uh, in their last game against Cardiff, he started out on the right, swung in the most unbelievable cross for Dyke to open the scoring. Uh, but I've seen flashes and elements of, of his game that can work 
playing centrally. Uh, West Brom are unbeaten in 11 at home in all competitions, winning 10 of them. They have only conceded once there during that run, a 1-1 draw against Blackburn Rovers on February the 15th. Holy fucking shit. Let me read that again. West Brom are unbeaten. Unbeaten. They haven't lost at home in 11 games. And they've won 10 of them. And the only game where they conceded a goal was in a 1-1 draw against Blackburn Rovers. Oh. And Mill had there off the back of a 1-0 home defeat to Huddersfield. That was a massive result for Albion and a bit of a surprise, said Fox. Jed called this match massive in a radio interview and I couldn't disagree with him. But Albion cannot afford to not to win that game. They've got five home games remaining and three arrivals. Um, you've got Millwall, Norwich and Sunderland. They have to make that home advantage count. So there you go. Um, oh, holy shit. It does feel like a bit, like I said in the video the other day, a bit of foreshadowing. Um, fans were putting up on Twitter how uh, Cresswell's got more goals than Jed Wallace. Well, did you look at the assists? Because he's doing that instead of scoring. Um, yeah, please, please, Millwall players, please don't let him win. Don't let him, don't let him be the one that lets them win. Uh, yeah, please do something about that. Now, moving on to this from millsc.co.uk. Millwall host kit sponsors day at then. Indeed, so Mill Football Club hosted its kit sponsor day at the Den on Thursday, the 23rd of March, aimed at allowing sponsors to enjoy the benefits of purchase kit sponsorship packages. Days for attendees watch the Lions train in FC16 for each receiving a bespoke frame, complete with signed shirt and a photograph of their sponsored player or member of staff. The sponsors then enjoyed a two course lunch uh, with the first team squad before taking their frames home with them as a memento of the day. So you can take a look at our gallery from Kit Sponsor Day 2022-23 below. And if you're interested in purchasing a kit sponsorship uh, for next season, although if you go on the, the store, they're still advertising the ones for this season. They're still advertising the one for Aidan Muller, um, who left the club uh, in January. So, interesting. And they they The one for Aidan Muller that I looked at, I saw he was on there. I was like, oh, oh, oh. they still selling that? 600 quid. 600 quid, um, which is the price of two season tickets. Well, they were there about, so there you go. So there's the players on the pitch training. Um, and then we've got the players at the dinner afterwards. A lot of pitches to go through here, so I'm just going to spin through them. So you got Danny McNamara's. Um, giving his, his home sponsor to Stuart Allen. Lee Evans sponsoring Danny Mac's away kit. Uh, Danny Trappett sponsoring the um, training kit. Uh, Nicky Sullivan sponsoring Murray Wallace's away kit. Pat Maslin. Murray Wallace's training kit, Catherine Gale sponsoring Hutch, Hutch's home kit, Mark Moran sponsoring uh, Hutch's uh, away kit, and Pat Maslin sponsoring Hutch's third kit, again Pat Maslin sponsoring Cooper's home kit, Kevin Toomey, you may recognise uh, the gentleman there on the right from Ryan's TV, sponsoring Coop's uh, third kit. Uh, the Warehouse Cafe, which uh, he's featured in the Lions TV as well. I think they put ads on that. Um, and they've also spent some money sponsoring Coops' training kit. So there you go. Uh, James Burns there with Evans' home kit. And Burke's away kit. Got Dave Ward there with Billy Mitchell's home kit. Ellen Webster with Billy Mitchell's away kit. Billy Mitchell's third kit with Ben Cotton. Uh, John Rankin sponsoring Billy Mitchell's training kit. You've got Pat Maslin again sponsoring uh, Fleming's home kit. 
Joseph, it's Joe Serafa. You may recognise him from that Millwall podcast. Uh, the geezer on the left, sponsoring Fleming's Away Kit. Grant Mason of uh, Mason Scaffolding, who are the shirt sponsors on the back of the shirt, sponsoring Fleming's Fur Kit. Uh, David Quarterman, sponsoring Fleming's Training Kit. The Blue Anchor in Bermondsey, the Blue Anchor Pub in Bermondsey, sponsoring uh, Scott Malone's Home Kit. Uh, Barry Breadmore, sponsoring Tyler Burry's Home Kit. Uh, Wayne Millward, sponsoring Tyler Burry's Third Kit. And again, Wayne Millward sponsoring Tyler Berry's Away Kit. Uh, Craig Bowe sponsoring Callum Styles' Home Kit. Five Bells in New Cross sponsoring Ryan Leonard's Home Kit. And I mentioned they raffled this off, so I assume that's a raffle winner there. They did raffle this off, so uh, I told you about that in a video uh, last month. Um, Graham Hopperton, Leonard's Away Kit. Grant Mason again with Watmore's Home Kit. Uh, ben Cotton with Watmore's Away Kit, Chris Chapman with Watmore's Third Kit, Tom Gow with uh, Mason Bennett's Home Kit, Lee Evans with Mason Bennett's um, Away Kit, James Burns again with Mason Bennett's Third Kit, Stuart Allen with Vogel Sammer's Home Kit, and then Stuart Allen again with uh, a donor in Mac's Home Kit. David Driver with Vogel Summers Away Kit, William Toomey, Connell Truman's uh, goalkeeping kit, uh, Stuart Allen with Biakovsky, James Burns again, Biakovsky, uh, Nick Toomey with George Honeyman's home kit, Grant Mason again with George Honeyman's Away Kit, George Honeyman's third kit, Darren Monday, Connor Pepiat with uh, the third kit of George Honeyman. Uh, Ronnie Dawson with again with uh, Honeyman's third kit. I don't know how that's possible. I guess um, maybe that's a Gary Routes home kit. Pat Maslin again uh, and Lee Westwood with uh, Gary Routes away kit and Gary Routes third kit. Well, they're all obviously that all the uh, coaching training kit. James Burns there. Uh, Ian Neal with Tom Bradshaw. Obviously, the players who sponsored Tom Bradshaw, Creswell, um, uh, Romain Essay, uh, and George Savile. Obviously, they're not there. So they, that's you. I guess you sponsor the player and you expect to like have a, a little lunch with them, and and they're not around, which is a shame. But there you go. Uh, that's Tom Bradshaw's away kit with Ju Juan. Gianluca Sari, um, and then Tom Bradshaw's third kit, Ellen Webster, Terry Reese with uh, Cresswell's home kit, Nicholas Proctor with uh, Cresswell's away kit, Cresswell's training kit with Jackie Nicholson, Yvonne May, Main uh, with Savile's home kit, and Gary Rouse handing all these out for players that aren't there. Uh, Savile's away kit, Glenn Brewer, uh, the Queen Vic pub. So it's good to see the local businesses. Uh, sponsoring um, sponsoring the kits. We've had the Queen Vic, the Blue Anchor, and the Fire Bells sponsoring uh, George Chapel's third kit. And then we got various other pictures here, all the people who attended. It was a small group because a lot of them, um, the kits are being sponsored by the same people. So you can see there, not a lot of people because they pump in a lot of money in, like I said. The Hayden Muller one was 600 quid. Um, so, there's a lot of money when they, you're doing that three or four times. It's quite insane. Pat, Pat Maslin there, pump putting the money in. Interesting stuff. So, there you go. That was the sponsor's day at the den. And that's it. We're back around to the beginning. So, there you go. That was the sponsor's day. And a den. Crazy stuff. Um, uh, Mill will also put this up. Non-league day. Tomorrow uh, is non-league day. Saturday the 25th of March. Uh, following its record-breaking event last season, non-league day reaches its 12th season on Saturday the 25th of March. Non-league day provides a platform for clubs to promote the importance of volunteer-led community football 
are giving fans across the country the chance to show support for their local non-league side. For the ninth time, Non-League Day has partnered with Prostate Cancer UK to encourage clubs and fans to raise funds to stop the disease which kills one man every 45 minutes. The non-league teams at home in the locality of the den include Dulwich Hamlet, Craig Runners and Welling United. Uh, to search where you live, um, you can go to non-league day website, which is nonleagueday.co.uk forward slash map. Uh, and you can look out for special events, reduced energy charges and more. Um, so they put, they made this graphic. You've got Dulwich Hamlet at home versus Oxford City. Grey Wanderers versus Horsham and Welling United versus Bath City. So let's have a little look and see some of the fixtures that are around. This is from uh, KentishFootball.co.uk. So you've got the smaller clubs playing today. You've got Charlton at home to Wickham. You've got Gillingham at home to Carlisle United. Gillingham basically, uh, what, Mill Reserves now? They've got AOB there. they got um, Sean Williams is there. Uh, Neil Harris, of course, is there. There's probably others that I've not mentioned. Uh, you've got Maidstone at home. Brom, you're away, though. Bartford are at home. Tunbridge Angels. Uh, Grey Wonders, as mentioned before, they actually play at Bromley ground. Which is a pretty decent ground now. Um, they built a nice new stand and a bar and all that. Um, in the Isthmian League, South East Division, you've got Seven Oaks Town. The home for Eversham Town. Um, then you've got the Fishers League, but Fisher are playing away. But that's at Ashford United FC. Um, you've got various clubs there. You got you do have Bermsey Town at home, who play at Vish, Fisher FC's ground, St Paul's ground on in Rotherhithe, um, and various other clubs there that I literally have no idea about. Ten and B, um, Guru Nanak, not a clue. Couldn't point to it on a map if you put a gun to the head. Haven't got a clue. All stars, all stars with a Z. What's that about? No idea. Um, but uh, the Goldfingers versus AMG Ballers with a Z. No idea. Absolutely none. But these are all your games that are going on here uh, in the Kentish area. KentishFootball.co.uk. So there's your non league day fixtures. Well, if you're gonna go out, although the weather's been a bit shit, hasn't it? So moving on to this, also from MillWestC.co.uk. The tickets for the whole city game on Bank Holiday Monday, Easter Monday, uh, 10th of April, kickoff 3 p.m. in the Skybet Championship, and tickets go on sale to season ticket holders with 660 points from this Monday, 9:30 a.m. Then on Tuesday, it's 620 points. On Wednesday, it's 610 points. And then on the Thursday, it goes to members with 260 points. Then on the Friday, it goes to a members with 190 points. And then you've got the old weekend to buy that. And if there's still any left, they go on Monday the 3rd to members who have 170 or less. So anyone, anyone with a membership, basically. Uh, tickets are priced at 20 quid. Uh, once tickets are sold out in the north stand, tickets in the east stand are priced at 24. So if you want a cheaper ticket, there's 119, nine, there's 119, there's eight, 819 tickets uh, priced at 20 quid. So the first 819 people. Um, which I assume the north stand is, I have no idea about whole, the whole stadium. I assume. That an all stand is on one of the ends, but I literally have no because it's a cheaper ticket, and the tickets that are on the sides are usually more expensive. So, but then they're saying that you can't choose; it's just all stand. So, if you're a season ticket holder and you want to sit on the side and not on the end, uh, with a better view, I assume I'm not. You might want to wait until 819 tickets have been sold, and then I'll start selling other tickets. But it doesn't say, um, oh, here we go. So we have an initial allocation of 1,630. So doing a quick math, that's basically what 800, basically the same amount 800 in the north stand, and then 800 over 819 in the other stand. 
Um, so there you go. And they're not letting you pick and choose. It's literally all the North Stand tickets have to go first. So once you've sold age 219, if you're the 820th ticket, then you pay £24, but you have it on the side. I imagine it's in the corner still. Right? It won't be in the middle of the side of the stand. But still, um, there you go. Um, so there's there's your information there. Yeah, there's coach travel, price of 32 quid. Um, so there you go. I have no idea about that. All the trains are on Bank Holiday Monday. I know the train strikes appear to be over. Which is good because there was one planned for Saturday, the first for the West Brom game, but that is done. Not happening. So that's back on the agenda now. Um, moving on to another cap for Romain Essay. England under 18, 0. Belgium under 18, 3. Um, yes. So we have Romain Essay. So the last game he started. And they changed the whole team. Basically a glorified kick out if you watch the video before. They changed the whole team on the 61st minute. They kept the goalkeeper in. That's the same thing as happened now. This is exactly what I said would happen. The players who were the subs for the last game now started this game. Then the players who started the last game are the subs for this game. So I wonder what they're going to do in the next game. Maybe it's going to be 45 minutes for each team. Don't know. Um, they they brought They used a different goalkeeper. So... They've got three goalkeepers, so I imagine the next goalkeeper who hasn't played yet will play in the last game. And then I assume they're going to be 45 minutes each way. Or who knows, maybe the, club, uh, the players and the bigger teams or the players who are actually playing first team football um, might get a rest. You don't know, but I assume it's going to be 45 minutes each way. Just based on, on the... Um, on the uh, What's happened so far? Just a random guess. Uh, so Belgium took the lead in the 17th minute um, for a free kick by Enoch Atta Agueyu. Uh, England uh, under 18s had the chance to equalise for the game spot just before half hour mark. Joe Bellingham's shot was blocked by the hand of a Belgian player. However, the spot kick by Captain Bellingham was saved by Mike Penders. Ten minutes later, Belgium doubled their advantage through Chems Dini Talbi. Uh, England goalkeeper Ben Sisse. Made a number of fine saves during the game, but he couldn't stop Belgium from going three goals up early in the second half through Malik Ofana. So, what's um, bring it up here is a bit jumbled up, so I'll highlight for you. So, Romain Essay wearing number 14, come on for Bellingham in the 60th minute, uh, as well as all the other players. They, everyone came on in the 60th minute. Um, Oh, actually, one of the players came off at half time. So I guess that may have been for injury. Uh, Jemar Simpson Pussy for Allen, 45 minutes. Um, so, yeah. So, what this means is that when Romain Esse has been on the pitch, England haven't conceded a goal, and, but they haven't scored either. So, this, I assume that the players who started this game have a. Um, they appear to be better players. Players at Manchester City and players at top premiership clubs and stuff like that. Got Bellingham and, and players like that. Um, but they are not the, the best ones. Because they started this game and all three of the goals came before the substitution happened. And these players were... When in the last game when they came on, it was nil nil. After they came on, uh, Croatia scored and then England scored two two goals as well. So um, it seems that whatever Romain Essay, whatever pack Romain Essay, and whether it's the B team or whatever, they appear to be doing a better job of uh, not conceding. They haven't scored either, so there is that. Um, so yeah, Romain Essay again get a second cap. Played uh, 30 minutes um, for, for the under 18s. And we move on to the next game, which I think is on Monday. And I assume that they're going to get at least 45 minutes each. I have no idea. So, yeah, the game against Switzerland on Monday. So, there you go. Uh, another uh, international cap for Romain SA under 18s. Uh, now, we're going to finish with this. 
from thecourier.co.uk. Uh, I think it's the Dundee Courier. I'm not sure. It might be the Perth Courier. I'm not too sure. It's a Scottish paper that is covering St. Johnson. And uh, they've got a story about Alex Mitchell. So Alex Mitchell, dad of online St. Johnson defender, tried to find the Scottish blood Ryan for me all man. A row in McGowan. Ryan McGowan has suggested Scotland and Australia should investigate whether his Perth teammate qualified for either of the countries, but homework has come up dry. Alex Mitchell's dad did, did a bit of digging trying to unearth a Scottish bloodline for the on loan def St Johnson defender. But alas, playing his club football north of the border is the limit of the Mill centre back's Caledonian connection. Uh, Perth teammate Ryan McGowan told Courier Sport in January. Mitchell has similar qualities to Harry Souter, suggesting that Australia and the SFA should investigate whether that is a potential new recruit to be had. But neither the Socceroos nor Scotland will get the chance to test the 21-year-old's allegiance to the country of his birth. Uh, Mitchell family homework has revealed it's England or nothing. Do you know what? A couple of years ago when I was a youngster, a Scottish scout asked if I had a bloodline, he said. I think my dad hired a private investigator to find out in the end. Turns out I'm fully English. Uh, there are no Macs anywhere. International football is likely to prove beyond Mitchell being a high bar to play for England, but he'll do his best to emulate the club career of fellow Saints defender Andy Considine, whose mastery of his trade resulted in three Scotland caps coming his way. Andy is a leader on and off the pitch, said Mitchell. He's a big role model for me. If there's anything you need to know or find out, go to Andy. Ask him a question about football and he knows it. I'd love to have a career like Guy's. Uh, that experience is worth its weight in gold. In the season, you have form dips and when I had one, he told me, that's going to happen and what's important is your reaction to it. It's impossible to play well every game. Andy stresses how important it is to stay consistent in how you train and prepare. It's a not out... Uh, Constantine clocked up his 600th appearance last month. It's a not out total that Mitchell finds hard to compute. I can't get my head around how he's got to 600 appearances, he said. I'm on just over 60 now and I've been playing for two years. Playing 30 games a year would be good for most players, but that's, that only gets you halfway over 10 years. I don't understand how you can play that many games and struggle with the match. It's incredible. Uh, what a guy. You can't put into words how important he is in the dressing room. Uh, Goldie, Gowser and others have been massive for me as well. Gowser calmed my nerves near the start of the season and Goldie was amazing when we were battling with each other to play. Uh, some players would be hostile, but he was the opposite. Uh, and that's, it just ends there. And there you go. So, on that note, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.